Hey fellow workers, my name is Kim Siever. Welcome back to my channel. Before I start on the main message of my video, I just want to give a shout out to my newest monthly contributors, Michael Triskello, Judy McLaughlin, and Michelle Denae. Monthly subscriptions like yours help me make videos like this one. Now on to the rest of my video. I recently spoke about how people perpetuate the myth that Alberta sends too much money to Ottawa. In response, I had a few people comment saying that I was misunderstanding that the real issue is that Alberta doesn't get enough back. This is particularly the case if you compare how much revenue the federal government generates within Alberta and how much it spends in Alberta. And it's true. At $6,642 per person, Alberta did receive less per capita from the federal government in 2017 than any other province. That amount was 1,766 less per person than the national average. So the counter argument to the idea that Alberta gets too little from the feds shouldn't be, no it doesn't. The counter argument should be, why? it gets so little. Federal expenditures in the provinces fall under five main categories. Net expenditures on goods and services, transfers to persons, transfers to provincial governments, debt servicing, and others. Debt servicing costs on a per capita basis is the same for every province, so I won't address that in this video. Other expenses include business subsidies, transfers to non-residents, and certain payments to local governments. However, they make up less than 5% of the federal expense budget, so I won't address that either. Which leaves the other three. First, the federal government does indeed spend less per capita on goods and services in Alberta than it does in any other province. These goods and services generally include such things as public servant salaries, day-to-day -day operation of government departments, military installations and operations, and purchasing of supplies and materials for all these endeavors. So the reason that the federal government spends less per capita on goods and services in Alberta is that it operates fewer federal institutions per capita in Alberta or it pays workers in those institutions less. But the latter seems unlikely since Alberta has the highest median income in the country. And with the Fair Deal panel report recommending advocating for more federal services in Alberta, this number potentially could rise. That being said, if the UCP succeeds in replacing some federal services with provincial ones, firearms office, CPP, provincial police, provincial tax agency, etc., it may drop this number even more. Second, Alberta is also lowest per capita in federal transfers to persons, which includes such things as employment insurance, Canada Pension Plan, and old age security. As I mentioned, Alberta has the highest median income in the country. That means there will be fewer people claiming EI compared to other provinces. It also has the lowest median age, so fewer people will be receiving CPP and OAS payments. The third expense category is the federal transfer programs, which includes equalization payments, federal health transfers, and federal social transfers. Alberta isn't the lowest per capita in this area. BC and Ontario are actually both lower than Alberta. Granted, Alberta is still below the national average. Obviously, Alberta doesn't get equalization payments, so that'll reduce the amount they receive in this area. In 2017, Alberta had the highest GDP per capita, as well as the highest incomes. That means they should have the fiscal capacity to generate enough revenue through personal and corporate income taxes and through other taxation such as a sales tax to cover provincial expenditures without needing to be subsidized through federal equalization payments. And that's not even including royalty revenue as compared to other provinces. So there you have it. Alberta receives so little from the federal government than other provinces because we have fewer services in Alberta, we have higher incomes, we have a younger population, and we have the fiscal capacity to generate sufficient provincial income. Thanks for watching. Thanks to all these subscribers and Patreon patrons who make this video possible. Please visit my website at kimsiever.ca. You can also find me on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, and Medium. If you appreciate the videos I share on YouTube, the posts I write on my blog, and the content I share on my other social media accounts, please consider making a monthly donation either through PayPal or Patreon. If you agree with the points I raise in my video, please give me a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below why. Please share my video and subscribe to my channel. Please click on the notification bell so you're notified every time I upload a new video. I look forward to talking to you again soon. Solidarity.